Welcome, Bright Church, to another devotional. Uh, for today's devotional, let's read John uh, chapter 11, uh, verses 45 through 53. John chapter 11, 45 through 53. It says here, Many of the Jews, therefore, who came, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered the council and said, What are we to do? For this man performs many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all, nor do you understand that it is better for you that one man should die for the people not that the whole nation should perish. He did not say this of his own accord, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but also to gather into one the children of God who are scattered abroad. So from that day on, they made plans to put him to death. It's an interesting passage. And one of the things that I uh, found interesting about this passage was uh, the following question. Why were the Pharisees convinced that if more people were to follow Jesus and things were going to continue the, the way that they are, uh, that they would lose their place, they maybe would be exiled or um, they'd be run over, they'd be lose their place geographically maybe, uh, and also um, their nation. Um, that's an important question. Logically, what connection does that uh, is there between Jesus having more and more followers and then the nation of Israel basically being taken over by Romans? So their perspective is probably from the Old Testament uh, Messiah that they've read about so often. Um, and the Old Testament Messiah or the Old Testament dictated that the Messiah should come and be victorious over his enemies, that uh, he would take the nation of Israel and it would be, the nation of Israel would rule over uh, everyone. They, they would be the new ruling nation. So when people saw Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead, they, some of them went to the Pharisees and said, this is an incredible miracle. And this was the turning point for the Pharisees. They said, look, we have to be proactive about this. We need to uh, do something because if he continues like this, then we will not have the position that we have. And they were afraid. They were afraid, uh, legitimately afraid, legitimately afraid of two things. One, losing their position in society uh, as religious authorities. And the second thing was losing their nation. They cared for their nation. Um, first of all, they were the uh, religious authorities, right? They at that time dictated how uh, people prioritized and what they uh, believed, how they prioritized their life, what their life should look like. And they are also a chain link, basically, between the... Um, authorities of um, the Roman governors and the, uh, the Roman authorities and their people. And they try to make sure that there is enough peace, that there uh, would be, um, that their lives would be okay under this rule. But at the same time, they knew that there would be a Messiah coming and they had their own weapons. They were basically, though they were autonomous, they were um, paying taxes to the Roman um, Empire. So, some of them uh, were really legitimately afraid. And you could actually take this a couple ways. One thing, one way that you can think about this is that they were afraid because uh, if people were going to follow Jesus as the Messiah, though they did not believe Jesus was the Messiah, the Pharisees didn't, but if people were going to believe he is the Messiah, they would take up their weapons and they'd go against the Roman Empire and would be probably squashed by them, the Roman Empire, right? That's one thing. That's one perspective. The other perspective is that if people legitimately followed him as Messiah and also obeyed his teachings, then they would also be squashed by the Roman Empire. Here's why. If they were going to follow Jesus and obey his teachings, what did Jesus uh, teach? Uh, he teached something that was more or less contrary. It was actually um, bigger uh, than what the Old Testament taught. The Old Testament said, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. But Jesus said, if you get hit, turn the other cheek. If you are getting sued for your shirt, give him your jacket as well, right? And so if Jesus is preaching this and he is considered the Messiah, then people will give up their weapons. They will become more and more oppressed. And then, of course, the Roman Empire is going to take over even more and the nation of Israel won't exist. 
And so either way you take it, they were afraid for their position in uh, society and they were afraid for their nation disappearing because either way you take it, um, Jesus is being followed. Uh, either they're going to be oppressed because of just being smushed or they're going to be oppressed because they lay down their weapons and they uh, don't take over. They don't uh, make any riots and, uh, and so forth. So why were they uncomfortable with this? Why were they uncomfortable with the Jesus taking over? The answer is they did not believe he was the Messiah, right? He, they did not believe that he was God. That, uh, he, they did not believe in his div divinity. Um, if they did this, if they did believe this, um, think about how uncomfortable they would be with their actions. So they disregarded who Jesus was. They did not think about the, the all the phrases that they heard about him performing all these miracles. Remember, uh, people said, will somebody come and create greater miracles than these, right? And nobody has created or performed uh, greater miracles than the ones that Jesus was performing, ever. And so they were considering this to be truly the Messiah. And Pharisees, they disregarded this. They didn't think about Jesus' divinity based on the signs and the miracles. But can you imagine for the moment, for a moment that they did? Think about this. The Pharisees believe for a moment that Jesus is truly the Messiah, that he is divine. Can you imagine how uncomfortable they would feel about their actions, namely superimposing all these regulations on top of what God uh, had uh, uh, you know, prescribed uh, in the Ten Commandments and to Moses? Can you imagine how they would feel un uncomfortable when uh, they were called out about taking over widows' homes? Or how they would pray in, on, uh, in the middle of streets and seem pi uh, show their piety uh, uh, by praying in the middle of streets. All of these would make um, uh, the Pharisees uncomfortable. These things that uh, they were doing, they were being viewed as righteous people, but with the message and who Jesus was, this would make them very uncomfortable. So think about this position. Pharisees are righteous people in the eyes of the public. And yet, Jesus makes them uncomfortable because the righteous deeds that they're doing or what they think they're doing um, goes against what God expects, the, the, the false piety, um, taking over and doing uh, crazy things financially or uh, superimposing regulations that God actually didn't um, uh, need or didn't require and therefore actually annihilating or crossing out certain things that God did. Uh, so Jesus made the uh, made the Pharisees uncomfortable, uh, even though they were viewed as righteous people. So let me ask you, though you are made righteous by your faith in Jesus being the Messiah and being God and paying for your sins and uh, ri rising from the dead for to make you righteous, um, would the opinions that you have and the habits that you have, though being righteous, make you uncomfortable if Jesus was present? Um, do you have habits that Jesus wouldn't approve of, though you are a righteous person? So you may consider yourself a, a, a disciple of Jesus, but like, P but like Peter, maybe you think very poorly of the authorities. Um, or maybe you consider yourself a disciple of Jesus, but like uh, Judas, you take that which is not yours. Or maybe you are a disciple of Jesus, righteous, but just like uh, John and uh, James and their mother, uh, you're seeking honor and prestige among uh, church members. There are all of these things that we do, we think, we have opinions of, and when we realize that Jesus is near, that his spirit is inside of us, we start thinking or feeling uncomfortable. And that, that's legitimate, that's correct, because Jesus makes people uncomfortable especially when they don't fall in line with uh, truly um, good deeds and, and truly righteous character. So what I want you guys to do for your devotional time, think about and take inventory of those opinions and those habits that you have that would, be, that would make you uncomfortable if Jesus was near. And then realize his spirit is inside of you. Jesus is near. And ask the Holy Spirit to change your heart, change your opinions. And maybe you'll notice next time uh, when uh, you are being stingy, the Holy Spirit will gently tell you, look, you need to be sacrificial in this situation. Uh, or next time you are 
on social media uh, for several hours, the Holy Spirit will remind you, you know, this might not be a good uh, way of spend, spending the rest of your day. Uh, or different situations that you can be in, and the Holy Spirit will uh, show you, will reveal to you those things and make you uncomfortable uh, about those things that uh, are not in line with the character uh, that God expects of his children. You are a child of God, and your character is being changed and being formed for God's kingdom by the Holy Spirit that is, that is inside of you. And you'll notice that with every single time that you obey the Holy Spirit, that you'll obey and say, look, this is uncomfortable. I should not be doing this or thinking this or saying this in the presence of Jesus, in the presence of the Holy Spirit inside of me. The more an appetite for righteous deeds, truly righteous deeds, will grow. And then just like Jesus once said about himself, that he has an appetite, he his will or his food is basically fulfilling God's will, you will see how your appetite will grow for, for uh, fulfilling God's will. So analyze this text and think about how uncomfortable righteous people are before Jesus when they do things that are really not righteous things. And think about those things that you do. Don't get up from your knees too fast. Let the Holy Spirit really talk to you and say, look, this opinion you have about authorities or the way that you, are, you act among these friends um, is not correct. And think about and ask for how you would change that uh, to be in line with what God and what Jesus expects for his kingdom. Be blessed.